Hey everyone, welcome to The Cabin. My name's Alec Britz, and today we're going to be talking about the Neve 1073 OPX. I'm going to show you all of the unit's features, how it connects to your workstation, and most importantly, how it sounds. At the end of the video, I'll give you some of my thoughts on the unit. So, I hope you enjoy, and thank you very much to Studio Care for letting this video be a possibility. Alrighty, the front of the Neve 1073 OPX is kind of divided into three different sections. We have the eight microphone preamplifiers, we have the digital control section, which also houses the power button, and then we have the monitor control section on the bottom. I'll go through all the functions of the microphone preamplifier, starting with the 48 volt phantom power. We have a minus 25 dB pad. We have a low Z button for microphones that are dynamic or ribbon. Then we have a continuously rotatable gain part. What's really cool about this is that it's in 1 dB steps, so you'll be able to do stereo matching a lot easier than usual uh, using trim parts and then 5 dB steps when, on a normal 1073. We have an input selector switch that goes from mic, line, DI, back to mic again. If you hold down the input selector switch, it flips the phase, which is a really cool thing that took me a little second to figure out. Then we have the front uh, button, which is currently illuminated. That turns on the front connections. What's really cool about that is on the back you have DB25 connectors, which I have wired into my patch bay. That has allowed me to have all the microphones in my live room connected to the drum kit. And then whenever I'm tracking synths or vocals or anything inside of the control room, I just hit the front button. And then that allows me to use the unit without having to do any additional patching, which is extremely useful. Underneath the front button, we have the 80 Hertz uh, low cut, which is great for moments like this, where I'm using a ribbon microphone to chat to you guys. In the digital connectivity part, the unit can operate over USB or Dante from 44.1 all the way up to 192 uh, kilohertz and then underneath that we have the monitoring section the monitoring section is pretty amazing because you can monitor inputs 1 inputs 2 or inputs 1 and 2 uh, and you can do that all the way through and then you have your digital monitoring and then your headphone monitoring and then also they've added a mono button which is pretty handy if you are using this as your primary interface without a monitor controller so that's pretty much the front of the unit let's go to the back we have microphone inputs 1 to 8, line inputs 1 to 8, then we have the communications control. And the communications control connects straight into your network. Uh, once you've done that, you download the OPX application, and then you can use this unit remotely. It doesn't necessarily need to be within hand's reach, so if you wanted to live inside of the live room and you could control all of the functionality, then very easily done. After that, we have the digital card. This is the AM6223, uh, specifically designed for the OPX. It's one of Neve's new digital cards. It allows you to use the unit as a Dante interface or as a USB interface. When you're using it as a USB interface, you can control the headroom of the unit. So you have plus 26, plus 24, and plus 18. Next to that, we have the word clock inputs, and outputs and then we have the power input this is an external wall ward style power supply it's more of a wall brick if i'm honest it's a monster but it does the job extremely well and no problem having power on the outside it keeps the noise of the unit low which is always a win next up we have the monitor outputs then we have the digital monitor inputs and finally we have the line outputs what's interesting about the line outputs is that they're always active so even if you're connected via usb these guys are still going to be putting out the outputs of each of the microphone preamplifiers, which allows you to have several different possibilities of how you integrate this within your system. Cool. Coming up next, I'm going to play a song for you guys, and hopefully that'll give you a bit of an idea of how this unit sounds when you stack up a bunch of vocals, drums, synthesizer, and bass. So, hope you enjoy. See you at the end for my thoughts.
So, the OPX. What is that to say? Eight Neve mic pre's. Yes, they don't have output transformers, but they sound amazing. There's no doubt about it. There's no noise. It's extremely easy to integrate with the DB25s in the back and the XLR combi jacks in the front. Eight DIs. And then you have the whole digital side of things. You can use it as a Dante or a USB interface. If you use it via Dante, you can link eight of these up together, which is pretty cool. The monitoring section is extremely comprehensive, um, even though you have to use the little touch rotary encoder quite a bit, which is, you know, that's what you, you've only got that much space. So I get it. Um, all in all, I'm extremely impressed with this unit. Yes, there is the whole, how many transformers, which transformers, who transformed the transformers? It's fine. It sounds awesome. You can't go wrong. If you get a chance to have a demo one, it integrates really easily. For me, I don't need the digital card because I'd rather link it into my console and use my conversion that I already have. But if you want an amazing 8-channel interface, then sure. Things that I would do a little bit differently um, that would make it more appealing to me from a digital side is if the inputs 1 to 8 were just the microphones and then 9 through 16 if there were another 8 for that to be the line inputs um, then that would be great because I think a lot of people who can afford this would be able to or already have their own mic pre's um, that they could integrate in. And there's obviously the whole D2A side of it that doesn't exist within this box um, in terms of like having eight outputs or having insert points on every channel would be great. But, you know, I don't think that's what this is designed for. This is designed to be a killer front end um, to your workflow, either a workflow you already have like this one, or if you want to build a Dante audio network then you're not going to be complaining about the audio signal or quality here. So all in all, great work. Great price. Can't complain. Thank you so much for watching. This has been my first ever YouTube foray, so hopefully see you soon. And um, have yourselves a great day. And be kind. Chat to you soon.